Well, hello there and welcome to episode four of the, um, I was going to call it The Road to Dublin, but I think that was the title of the last series. Um, I think this one's called We Go Again. So uh, this is my uh, vlog of my journey, um, preparing myself for Dublin Marathon again. Uh, last year I entered, I suppose, the training block not feeling 100% fit. Um, and um, the goal was to try and get myself under 3.30 for the marathon, which I failed at on the day. Although training, I felt that the training went pretty well. Um, I think there was just something lacking. There was a few mistakes made. Um, so we're trying to rectify those, put them to bed and uh, all the other cliches that you can think of. Um, few of the changes that I have made is I've increased the volume of the miles that I'm covering. I'm hopefully going to do a little bit more race specific uh, miles too. Um, definitely didn't do enough of those to get used to that faster pace. Um, I think last time around I was trying to squeeze a lot of sort of speedier work into the, the, the midweek stuff, but it was short speed work. It wasn't anything of any sort of real sustenance. Um, it was an amalgamation of 5K work um, and marathon training, which really didn't work out well for me in the long term because I just didn't have that extra bit of strength uh, to pull me through to the end. Uh, so I think last year my, my, my time came out at 3.43 or so. Um, so so this year, say, we're, we're going to put that to bed and we're going to try to get ourselves, ourselves, me, under the 3.30. So this is, say, episode four um, of, of the training, of the video, the training video series. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say, um, where I go through the weekly uh, runs and sessions, how things have went and how um, how I felt and what more we could do differently. Um, you'll excuse us here, I'm actually recording this on my phone as opposed to the wee camera just because I'm in, I'm in work here at the moment. So last week I started off um, doing something I don't normally do and that's running on a Monday. Um, the legs actually felt really tired from the previous day. Um, and I knew that a recovery run would actually be more beneficial than taking a full day's rest. So I fired up the treadmill and done an easy four miles on it. Um, nothing spectacular to write home about. Uh, four miles, it worked out at 9.17 average. The heart rate was sitting at about 133. So it was really, really slow, really controlled, really easy and exactly what the legs needed. They just needed that little bit of extra uh, sort of stretching out for that there. Um, Tuesday, um, Tuesday I had 10 miles um, and the goal was here to do them at marathon pace. Um, I chose a route that I suppose starts downhill and finishes uphill, um, trying to build a little bit of the course profile of Dublin Marathon into the training block as well, um, where I know that the sort of first two, three miles you've got to swoop downhill, you're climbing for a bit um, up to the sort of, the sort of probably around the halfway mark and then it starts to get just sort of gradual undulating as they call it. Um, so so this the route that I have tends to follow that same kind of profile. Um, this here was done with say the goal was marathon paced um, and I went out at sort of 751 average. Um, felt good, felt comfortable. Um, wasn't, yeah, it actually just felt like a nice comfortable run. I think the the sort of amalgamation of having a recovery run the day before and not busting myself over the week before um, allowed this year run to feel quite comfortable. Um, absolutely fine. Uh, 7.51 average, the same, really good with that there. Uh, Fuel-wise, had nothing with me. No water, no gels, no no anything. Um, it was it was just a nice run. The run sort of, sort of free as well. The next day was another 10 miler and um, just the way the day planned out, um, having the kids at home, it actually ended up with on this on the treadmill. Um, it was an easy paced run. I threw on the heart rate monitor and uh, started the treadmill up at what felt very easy. Um, it actually was, was sitting at 9.47 and the heart rate was probably a bit too low if there can be such a thing as too low. But the heart rate was just sitting at around 125 at that there on the treadmill. Um, so I thought I would up it a little bit. So I ended up doing this more as a progression run um, than an easy run. Um, 
but the overall heart rate did stay within the, the easy zones until the last probably five minutes or so. Started at 9.47, finished at 9.52, but the overall average pace was 8.50s-ish, there or thereabouts. But that was a really nice run, I really enjoyed that there. Uh, just under 90 minutes on the treadmill. Um, watch the week program as well. It's not often I get to do that there. Thursday's run. Um, again, nothing too much to write home about here. It was 60 minutes easy run. Um, it was a very hilly route around Macrofeltz. Um, like very, very hilly. It dropped down. Probably the first mile was downhill and then the next five and a half was uphill. I ended up doing just under six and a half miles, I think it was, just under seven miles actually. He had 41 average and I say very hilly route. Friday, Friday now, things just hit me, fatigue hit me here on Friday. Um, this is the first session I think that I've actually missed of, of this whole plan that I knew that I would never, never squeeze back in again. I had planned to do 13 miles the day got away from me. I was really busy in work. I was really busy in life. Everything just got on top of me and I just didn't have time. I didn't have time to get this one done or, or give it any justice in any shape or form. I potentially could have done an easier sort of two, three miles, but um, I just didn't have the inclination to do it. So this is the first session that is definitely missed and will not be be, be crammed in at any point in form um, because I just won't have the time to, to squeeze it in and to get another 13 mile run in. And you know what? I don't actually feel too bad for missing it. Um, I, I, I sort of know that we're going to miss some sessions. I know that we're going to miss some, but it wasn't a key session. Um, it was just a long, easy run. That sounds a wee bit of uh, uh, sort of unambiguous. That, that's not the right word. It just doesn't sound... I, I just... I missed it. And, and it's gone. It's forgot about. Um, so the next day was Saturday. And it was a, meant to be a seven mile run with some strides. And that's what I did. I did seven miles easy. Picked a slightly flatter route. Uh, done at 8.34 average. And fell, finished up with 10 by 100 meter strides. Uh, strides are really fun they, they, they really do help get the legs moving help improve run economy and, and if you're not doing them as part of your session you should do they, they you know you should be doing anywhere between three and ten strides at the end of a uh, that easy run at, at least once every couple of weeks and um, help improve your run economy help improve your form um everything it's they're just really really good to have in your training plan um so that was that was that was just the first six days of the week uh, Sunday's run now, Sunday's run of sort of, I don't know why, I, 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 every time I look at the, the session that I wrote my own plan, like so, um, that says marathon paced runs, I do have a little bit of sort of trepidation, sort of thing, can I actually do this here? Um, and Sunday's run was no different, I looked at the plan, it was 16 miles with 12 of those meant to be at marathon pace. Um, some people approach these types of runs differently, maybe do two miles easy, then do the marathon pace in two miles. I ended up wanting to do the, the get the 12 out of the way first and foremost. So I did 12 miles at marathon pace um, and finished with the four miles easy. I ended up doing the 12 miles at 7.24s, which is faster than marathon pace. It's probably closer to half marathon pace at this stage of training. Um, it's about 30 seconds quicker than the marathon pace run that I done earlier in the week. And what was the difference? Shoes. I put on the vapor flies. So the Tuesday 10 miler at 7.51, I was wearing a pair of Nike Zoom Fly fly knits that probably have about four, maybe 500 miles in it and are very much at the end of their lifestyle. So that, you know, the whole marathon pace at that there, I'm ridiculously happy. But the difference in wearing the, the, the super shoes, uh, as they call them, is absolutely huge. Nearly fresh, I'm not going to say fresh out of the box because they've got about 100 miles in them. Um, but to put them on, it just makes it feel a lot more effortless so there was times I was looking down and I was trying to slow it down but I looked at the heart rate in conjunction with the pace and it felt comfortable at that there and um, now the lesson that I did learn last year in going into Dublin was going out a little bit too fast and um, so I'm gonna have to be a little bit more conservative especially when you put the super shoes on but Sunday's run it was it was 16 miles it's you know 741 average overall and that includes four miles at 833 and those four miles coming back 
I actually found it harder to slow down as well. Um, to, to keep that pace at 30, but knew that I had to and knew that I couldn't bust the, the legs too much. Um, also throughout the week, I've done a couple of walks with the dog. Um, I don't really record every walk I do with the dog unless I'm going to somewhere exciting doing a trail run. Uh, but on Sunday, I after I did the, the long run, I came in, got a bit of water, and I knew the dog needed to be fed. Uh, or sorry, not fed. I'm talking about my own food. Uh, I didn't actually eat anything. Um, I knew that the dog needed walked, and uh, I, I, she hadn't been out for a good long walk in a long time. So I thought we'd go for a little hike up the mountain. Um, but I let her dictate the pace, but she was busting to get out. Um, and we ended up going up and down the mountain at a ridiculously fast time, uh, coming down um, from top to bottom um, in, in like 10 minutes again, a uh, seven minute mile average. Uh, but she matched every step that I took and it was real good fun. Um, so the total miles over the week, 61.1. Um, I'd say that includes the mountain hike. Um, not quite the 60. 7-ish that I should have been doing this week but it's another week of plus 60 miles um, with two big marathon paced runs in there and lots and lots of easy runs as well uh, overall a real good strong week a good confidence building week for me um, I'm really happy with how training has been going I'm happy I'm happy to have missed a run I know that sounds a bit strange to say that there but I really do think if I had to actually put that 13 mile run in, Sunday's run might not have been as comfortable and might not have been as the confidence booster that it has been for me. Uh, this week, I haven't really looked too far ahead bar looking at my long run, which is 22 miles. Um, it is eight weeks to Dublin, I do believe now. Um, and I'm still working on that overall base. Uh, but I also get to inject a good bit of speed into this week as well. So there's going to be a good, um, I think there's some 800 meter reps, which I haven't done in a long, long time as well. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to getting that little bit of speed as well as the long endurance stuff in. It, it should be another 67 mile week if everything goes to plan. Uh, thoughts and musings, what else can I talk about here? I'll, I'll round up hopefully within the next couple of minutes. Uh, something that I have been doing um, for these long runs, and this probably is again something that I haven't done before. I've probably overfueled, um, but these here, because a lot of the runs have been fairly, fairly easy paced and zone two and sort of endurance based, I haven't actually been taking any fuel out with me. No gels, no tailwind, no bars, no sweets, no salt tablets, no nothing. Um, in fact, most of these runs have been fueled with nothing more than a bottle of water. And I've been feeling really good with that there. Now, will that be the plan come the marathon? Absolutely not. Um, I know that I will be pushing a little bit harder and I know that the, the increased uh, distance right up to the marathon distance will mean that I do need to take those extra fuels, salts and hydration on. Uh, but for these long runs, I'm quite happy not to take them, not to have to carry them. Um, because I do have a good read of my body and I sort of know exactly what I need. Um, I'm also quite experienced whenever it comes to the marathon with knowing when I'm going to take on the hydration, when I'm going to take on the fuels, when I'm going to take on the salts. Um, and that has never really changed. It's going to be pretty much uh, going to be tailwind um, every 10k, um, effectively one to two scoops within that 10k period. Um, dilute it way down, or dilute it down, concentrate it way down, and then dilute it as and when that I need to. So guys, look, I'll try and wrap this up. That'll be hopefully a 14 to 15 minute video, um, if my timer is correct. Um, as I say, I'm feeling good, feeling confident, um, feeling happy with how things have been going this week. Definitely much better than last week, whenever I cut the long run short. Um, yeah, pretty much it. So if you're doing Dublin and you're watching this here, um, let me know how your training has been going um, or if you have any questions or queries with regards to training, coaching or anything, do drop a, a comment below and I'll try and answer it. Okay guys, chat next week. Bye bye.